when Zionists say that the IDF is the most moral army in the world, that is a bold-faced lie. If they were telling the truth, then detainees would not be saying this. Just before his release, a fellow prisoner had called out to him, his voice barely rising above a whisper. Alran said, he asked the doctor to find his wife and kids in Gaza. He asked me to tell them that it is better for them to be martyrs, said Alran. It is better for them to die than to be captured and held here. If the IOF is the most moral army in the world, prisoners would not be saying that. Detainees would not be saying that. If they were the most moral army in the world, everything that they do would be moral. But that's not the case. What they have been put through is horrific. Do any of you remember Abu Ghraib? It was a US detention facility that was in Iraq during the Iraq war. And in Abu Ghraib, they actually tortured victims of that war. I want to share with you guys what Abu Ghraib was first before we get into this, because I think it's important to remember what it was and how horrible it was when we found out. So Abu Ghraib says, Abu Ghraib, torture and prisoner abuse. It says, during the early stages of the Iraq war, members of the United States Army and the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, committed a series of human rights violations and war crimes against detainees of the Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq, including physical abuse, sexual humiliation, physical and psychological torture, and sexual assault, as well as the killing of Manadel al-Jamandi and the secretion of his body. The abuses came to public attention with the publication of photographs of the abuse by CBS News in April of 2004, 20 years ago. The incidents caused shock and outrage, received widespread condemnation within the United States and internationally. The George W. Bush administration said that the abuses at Abu Ghraib were isolated incidents and not indicative of U.S. foreign policy. This was disputed by humanitarian organizations, including the Red Cross, Amnesty International, and Human Rights Watch. These organizations stated that the abuses at Abu Ghraib were part of a wider pattern of torture and brutal treatment at American overseas detention centers, including those in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Guantanamo Bay, also known as Gitmo. There were also 36 prisoners killed at Abu Ghraib due to insurgent mortar attacks. This also provoked criticism due to the facility's location in a combat zone. So remember Abu Ghraib. This was one of the things that really turned the tide against people being uh, against the Iraq war. What we're seeing right now, uh, when it regards to the genocide going on in Gaza right now, Gaza, Rafa, and Rafa, um, you know, it is harrowing. And there are more people joining the side of Palestinian liberation because they really cannot stomach seeing what is going on right now. It is horrible. Now, as far as the story is concerned, I want to give a huge shout out to two people to Savvy Savs and Eric T. Red for, first of all, uh, pushing this story out initially so that everybody gets to hear it. I think it's deeply important that we all hear this story. And I think that everybody in independent media needs to cover this story. It should not get overlooked at all. With that being said, uh, shout out to them for sharing the story and sharing the information with me. I wanna make sure that I do have a little bit of a different audience and I would like to cover this story as well and also get my takes on it too. 
So with that being said, <clears throat> there's something similar going on uh, by the hands of the IOF. And this was reported on by CNN. Surprisingly, now there's Israeli whistleblowers that have exposed really the concentration camp like conditions that are being committed against the Palestinians from Gaza. So we're gonna take a look at this video and then we will break it down. And yes, we're going to have a viewer discussion is advised, trigger warning. It's gonna be one of those types of streams. So let's get into it. It's a place the Israeli military doesn't want us to see. How many Palestinians are in there, right? Who are you? Give me please now. Hang on, what is it that you want? Can I oh, my card? But CNN has gained exclusive evidence of Palestinian prisoner abuse from multiple Israeli whistleblowers. <laughs> At the Sedi Taman facility in southern Israel, we joined human rights activists amid growing public concern for the detention. First of all, I want to pay attention to some of these signs. I may not be able to read them all, but we'll get what we can. Um, this one on the on the left, I can't read this one; it's too far away. But this one, the second one on the left, says. One died after they put electric, put the electric stick up his, hmm, you know what, for the sun don't shine. Remember what I said, remember Abu Ghraib. Remember it, let's continue. Uh, uh, the next one says, this one in the middle says, I heard a shot. This detainee did not return. Says they made us sit on our knees for 20 hours a day. Whoever moved or spoke was punished. The one on the right says, we would go into the bathroom and urinate on our clothes. And this is the place where we would drink water from. And then the one in the front says, Israel makes people disappear. I said, remember Abu Ghraib for a reason. Let's continue. Tainees being held inside. This is a protest by Israeli citizens outside a detention center close to Gaza, where we know hundreds of Palestinians have been held. You can see it's a closed military facility. It's behind a barbed wire fence. We're not permitted access. And there's hostility from passers-by. We just had somebody drive past in a car and they shouted out to us in Hebrew, yeah. you're defending murderers. No. You're defending, what do you no, no. We're, we're defending basic human rights. And eyewitnesses are now speaking out. Away from the military facility, near the beaches of Tel Aviv, one young Israeli army reservist agreed to speak about scores of detainees at Sedi Taman he says, are kept in cages or pens, constantly shackled and blindfolded, many for weeks on end. We've hidden his identity. This is why I say be careful. If the side you're on starts dehumanizing people, that means it's not going to be also in their rhetoric, it's also going to be in their actions. Remember Abu Ghraib. Remember. Remember not just the Holocaust in Germany. Remember the Holocaust of the African slaves for the last 500 years. Remember the Holocaust against the indigenous people on Turtle Island? Remember the Holocaust 
in Congo, over 10 million Congolese people were murdered by King Leopold. Whenever they dehumanize people, that also puts into your mind that they are less human, therefore horrible inhumane conditions against them are justified. We must never allow our humanity be, be taken away or take the humanity of others away. Let's continue. Identity and voice to shield him from prosecution. We were told they are not allowed to move and must sit upright. They're not allowed to talk or peek under their blindfolds. And what happened if they, if they did do that? So, what kind of punishments were meted out? We were allowed to pick out problematic people and punish them, having them stand with their hands above their heads for an unlimited time. If they didn't keep their hands up, we could zip tie them to the fence. I'm going to keep going. It's a lot. Israeli military says detainees are handcuffed based on their risk level and health status. But the account tallies with photographic evidence obtained by CNN of Palestinian detainees inside Sedi Temen. And with hand and wrist injuries shown to CNN by dozens of Palestinians released back into Gaza. I was zip tied and blindfolded, says this former detainee, and tortured in a way I never imagined. One source telling us the restraints were so tight they had to amputate a man's hand. Imagine having to have your hand amputated. Because they kept your hand zip tied for that long. It's torture. And people will sit there and justify. Oh, we just got to go after Hamas. But then when you find out they're not part of the Palestinian resistance or release them because they weren't, what type of repair recompense are you going to give them for the torture that you put them through? The view that I've heard expressed is that, you know, how, how do you think Israeli hostages are treated by Hamas? This sentiment was voiced in the facility, but I think that if Hamas is so abominable, which I agree with, then why use Hamas as a bar? It's a descent into dehumanization. Okay, I can't show that. But um, as far as, you know, um, what they're doing, uh, you know, what they have been doing uh, to a lot of these people. You cannot sit there and say that, oh, well, Hamas is doing something worse. It's like, but that doesn't give you the, that doesn't give you carte blanche to still treat people inhumanely. That's not, that's not right. We've hidden his identity and voice too. He can take them out and hit them maybe four or five times with a club. It's not done in the face, so you don't see blood. The detainees lie belly down, being hit and kicked, people screaming and dogs barking at them. It's terrifying. Some detainees are taken away and beaten really hard, so bones and teeth are broken. So you, you, you saw people who were subject to these beatings, who had their bro bones broken and who had their teeth broken. Yes, it's a practice which commanders know about. They want intelligence, but they also want revenge and punishment for what happened on October 7th. So committing war crimes as a means of revenge for people who 
most likely weren't part of the resistance on October 7th. That's collective punishment, is it not? Punishing people for the actions of a few, even though they don't have any type of ties to that few. There was a collective punishment event that happened here in the United States where thousands, over 3,000 Americans were killed because of the actions of a few in the regime of the United States. We affectionately call that event 9-11. And collective punishment was dealt to the United States because of what the West, the United States and Israel were doing to particularly the Palestinians and a lot of the people within Southwest Asia. And so are these people who are committing these heinous acts to Palestinians in this detention camp, are they not also doing the same thing? Dealing collective punishment to people who really don't have anything to do with what's going on or to the operations on October 7th? Let's continue. The Israeli military hasn't approved CNN's requests for access to Sedi Taman, but at the gates of the facility, we challenged the Israeli guards. How many Palestinians are in there? Right? Well, if you don't know, they're, you know, they're under the, as a, do you know if they're being handcuffed? Are they being blindfolded? No, no, no. This is a facility. As we leave, masked soldiers approach. Hello. I'm filming this place. It's, it's, it's anything you believe of, uh, of the army. Oh. So you, you... Who are you, young man? Let me see it. They try to take our cameras. What do you want now? Give me please now. What is it that you want? Oh, oh, oh. My card. <laughs> then order us to leave. Well, we're driving now to meet one. Israeli with personal experience of the Sadeh Tayman facility. It's experience that he says has left him shocked at the condition and the medical treatment of Palestinian detainees there. Hello. He told us he treated Palestinian detainees with gunshot wounds fresh from the war zone in Gaza, but was appalled at the lack of equipment and expertise. The problem is Gazans who are brought in are labeled as terrorists, and it is very popular opinion over here that terrorists deserve to die, so they do not deserve the same medical care as everyone else. If someone is serving time in prison for doing something, for committing a crime, and if they are sick in prison, they have a right to proper medical care, even if they are in prison. Why? Because if they're not sentenced to death, why are we allowing them, why are we punishing someone to death via a slow death through sickness or injury? Why are we allowing that? Right? Let's say somebody was got life in prison. But let's say that person got cancer, right? You're not gonna treat the cancer, you're just gonna allow the cancer to grow and kill the person? The person was the sentence to death, the person was sentenced to life in prison. So therefore, even if the person was sentenced to death, you have until that point 
where they're sending to death. Now, I don't, I'm not for the death penalty, but I'm just trying to make a point here. If that person is sentenced to death and they're supposed to die by this time, why are you sending this thing, them to death before that? You're also getting in the way of them making an appeal because what if they are actually innocent? What if they are need to appeal? What if they're trying to appeal so that they can have a life sentence instead of a death penalty? It's just, it, it, it's really against international law. It's inhumane. Oh my gosh. Satellite imagery obtained by CNN shows how the Sedi Taman facility was expanded after the October 7th attacks, with detention facilities and makeshift medical bays being added after public hospitals in Israel refused to treat injured Gazan suspects. That's another one that really wigs me out. They refuse to treat people from Gaza if they are suspects. Wow. Our hospitals here in the United States have literally treated mass shooters for injuries. Even though they have, they have murdered people. So that they can stand trial. So that they can be rendered judgment against. And yet you don't want to treat somebody because you suspect they're a terrorist. Oh my gosh. Eyewitness accounts describe a field hospital with 15 to 20 patients virtually naked and blindfolded with hands and feet shackled to their beds and wearing diapers. One eyewitness told CNN painful procedures were carried out by underqualified medics. Treatment the medical worker told us amounts to punishment. In my That's torture. It's not just, it's not just the murder of, I'm going to, I'm going to start saying 40,000. It's not just the murder of 40,000 plus people in Gaza. On top of that, it is also the torture of Gazans and detention centers like this. That is heinous. This is what the IOF does. This is what Zionists do. People like Netanyahu in his parasitic regime are allowing this to happen. This is Israel's Abu Ghraib. That's what we're looking at right now. Make no mistake about it. And for all of us who were outraged back in 2004 when we found out about Abu Ghraib, oh my God, I can't believe we're doing this. Hey, wake up, wake up. This is what's going on right now. This is what Israel's doing. It's not just the Netanyahu government, right? Because you can say, oh my God, Netanyahu, he's such a far right, uh, dangerous person. All we got to do is replace him. No, 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 no. What happened when Obama became president? Did he close Gitmo? Did he close Guantanamo Bay? He was a liberal. No. You think something like this would get closed if there was a liberal Zionist that replaced Netanyahu? Do you think that the occupation would end with a liberal Zionist? My sweet summer child. Absolutely not. Let's be real. Let's be, let, let's call a thing a thing. Look, I don't care if you give me mashed potatoes or potato salad, you're still serving me potatoes. 
a liberal Zionist and a conservative Zionist are all still Zionists. That's like saying a liberal fascist and a conservative fascist. What? Baby, wake up. Let's continue. My view is the idea of total vulnerability. If you imagine being unable to move, being unable to see what's going on, that's something that borders, if not crosses, into psychological torture. The Israeli military says prisoners are stripped for security checks and that investigations are opened when there's suspicion of misconduct. Still, accounts from Israelis and Palestinians inside and the shocking images paint a disturbing picture. It gets deeper. So that is what has been going on there. When Zionists say that the IDF is the most moral army in the world, that is a bold-faced lie. If they were telling the truth, then detainees would not be saying this. Just before his release, a fellow prisoner had called out to him, his voice barely rising above a whisper. Alaran said, he asked the doctor to find his wife and kids in Gaza. He asked me to tell them that it is better for them to be martyrs, said Alaran. It is better for them to die than to be captured and held here. If the IOF is the most moral army in the world, prisoners would not be saying that. Detainees would not be saying that. If they were the most moral army in the world, everything that they do would be moral. But that's not the case. What they have been put through is horrific. You cannot sit here and tell me that they are the most moral. And make no mistake, this fight for liberation is not to exterminate or get rid of Jewish people. This is not a war of religion. This is a fight against illegal occupation and apartheid by a regime of people who really just want to take the land and resources away from them. Ultimately, this is about resisting theft essentially. The torture against Palestinians was horrific and medical procedures are actually also being done without anesthesia. Let's go to that piece here. I think this is also It says whistleblower accounts portrayed a different kind of horror at the Sid Sedi uh, TMN Field Hospital. Quote, when I felt when I was dealing with those patients is an idea of total vulnerability. That was from a medic. It says, quote, if you imagine yourself being able to move, being unable to see what's going on and being completely naked, that leaves you completely exposed. I think that's some kind that something kind of borders on, if not crosses to psychological torture. Because another whistleblower said that he was ordered to perform medical procedures on the Palestinian detainees for which he was not qualified. Quote, I was asked to learn how to do things on the patients, performing minor medical procedures that are totally outside of my expertise. He said, adding that this was frequently done without anesthesia.
Now, you have anesthesia, you have two types. You have local anesthesia, local, local anesthetic, and in general anesthesia. Local anesthetic could be lidocaine in the area to numb the area so that the patient doesn't feel it or feels very little pain, whatever you're doing a procedure. Then you also have general anesthesia, which is given uh, intravenously to a patient so that they're knocked out and they don't feel anything at all. General anesthesia is usually reserved for uh, more evasive things, uh, procedures and surgeries. So with that being said, even local anesthesia, you didn't get it. And I've had procedures with local anesthesia and even then that was some of the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. With local anesthesia. And you mean to tell me that you're performing some of these things on these detainees without any anesthesia? That's evil. I gotta call it like I see it, it's evil. It says if they complained about the pain, they will be giving, they will be, they will be given par, paracetamol. He said, using another name for acetaminophen. That's Tylenol. Tylenol. Not local anesthetic, not general anesthesia, Tylenol. What? Are you kidding me right now? This is evil. My God. So it's just being there felt like being complicit in abuse. It says the same whistleblower also said he witnessed an amputation performed on a man who has sustained injuries caused by the constant zip tying of his wrists. The account tallied with details of a letter authored by a doctor working at Sentimian Hosp uh, published by Haretz in April. He says, from the first days of the medical facility's operation until today, I have faced serious ethical dilemmas. It says, more than that, I am writing this letter to warn you that the facility's operations do not comply with a single section among those dealing with health and the incarceration of unlawful combatants law. It says an IDF spokesperson denied the allegations reported by Haretz in a written statement to CNN at the time, saying that medical procedures were conducted with extreme care and in accordance with Israeli and international law. If that was the case, then they would be able to debunk whatever any of these detainees have said. And if they were, the detainees would not have these sores on their wrists. Some of them having to have their, their hands amputated. If that was the case. But it's not the case. Treating them worse than animals get treated better than this. Says so the spokesperson, uh, the postperson added that handcuffing detainees was done in accordance with procedures, their health condition, and the level of danger posed by them, and any and that any allegation of violence would be examined. It says whistleblowers also said that the medical exam were told to refrain from signing medical documents corroborating previous reporting by rights groups, physicians for human rights in Israel. The PHRI report released in April warned of a serious concern that anonymity is employed to prevent the possibility of investigations or complaints regarding breaches of medical ethics and professionalism. If you go to any hospital to have a procedure done, you have to sign documents before that procedure is done. Trust me, I've been on dialysis for 16 years. Ha 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 ha, I know. You have to have documents signed. The surgeon has to sign documents. 
The doctor has to sign documents. The nurse has to sign documents. Everybody that does a procedure has to sign documents. So if you have your medical professionals not signing any documents, who could be held accountable if investigations are done? Nobody. So therefore, you have these physicians that are doing these evasive surgeries without anesthesia, making mistakes in either harming, maiming, or even killing Palestinian detainees. Most moral army in the world, my butt. My goodness, are you kidding me right now? Quote, you don't sign anything and there's no verification of authority. Said, said the same whistleblower who said he lacked the appropriate training for the treatment he was asked to administer. It is a paradise for interns because it's like you do whatever you want. Of course, CNN also requested comment from the Israeli Health Ministry on the allegations in this report. The ministry refers CNN back to the IDF. So I'm going to share this uh, article in the chat for you guys. Please share this article, and I'll, I'll also include the video, but please share it so that people know what's going on. This is another Abu Ghraib. That's what this is. I make no mistake about it. This is torture happening to people, many of whom are innocent people in these facilities. And you mean to tell me that this is justified? You mean to tell me you want to justify this? No, no. Uh-uh, no. This is not justifiable. This is reprehensible. The fact that IOFs People in the IOF became whistleblowers to release this information. If you are not outraged about this, you may need to check your humanity. This should be covered by every independent news outlet because this is Abu Ghraib level inhumanity. Not only are their Palestinians subject to genocide, but also concentration camp like conditions and torture. This is why thousands of students and faculty are protesting on college campuses as we speak. This is why we are protesting in the streets to force our government and companies to divest from Israel. Share these stories. Share them so that more people are informed about what this Western vassal state like Israel is doing to the occupied people and oppressed Palestinians. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further, so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much, and you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses, and have a beautiful day.